Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that we can come before you. Wir danken dir, dass wir ein weiteres Mal vor dir erscheinen dürfen. We thank you that we can come and hear your word. Wir danken, dass wir kommen und dein Wort jetzt hören dürfen. We ask and pray, Lord, that you would forgive us our shortcomings, our failings, and our sins. Und wir möchten dich bitten, dass du unser zu kurz kommen, unser Versagen und unsere Sünden uns verzeihst. Hide us behind the cross of Calvary. Verbirg uns hinter dem Kreuz von Golgatha. Please pour out the Holy Spirit upon us, Lord. Und bitte gieße deinen Heiligen Geist jetzt über uns aus. Please teach us spiritual things by the Spirit of God. Bitte lehre uns geistliche Dinge durch den Geist Gottes. And please open them to our understanding in such a way that we would never forget them. Und bitte öffne sie unser Verständnis so, dass wir sie niemals vergessen werden. Please prepare us for the crisis that stands before us. Bitte bereite uns vor für die Krise, die vor uns liegt. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Und wir geben dir Dank in Jesu Namen. Amen. 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 In this evening, we want to look at, a little bit at the priest's garments. Und heute Abend wollen wir die Priestergewänder anschauen. And with that, I always said, you know, there's one quote about the Day of Atonement, where I always struggled with what Sister White was saying there. Yeah? Es gibt eine Zitat äh, bezüglich der Versöhnungstag, wo ich immer Schwierigkeiten hatte mit das, was Ellen White sagt. And um, is the light not on? Okay. So, and um, <coughs> and I think now I'm pretty certain how to solve it. Und ich bin mir jetzt sicher, dass ich um, das gelöst habe. Okay. So, but first let's go to Revelation chapter four. Aber zuerst gehen wir zur Offenbarung Kapitel 4. And there we see the throne room. Da sehen wir den Thronsack. And let's read the, let's read the verses 4 and verse 6. Und wir lesen da die Verse 4 und 6. And uh, when Maris, when you're there, please read verse 4 and verse 6 for us. Mm -hmm. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seat I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Okay, so we have the 24 elders, right? So we have 24 elders. And we have the four beasts. Und die vier Tiere. Okay, and um, David, you want to read Revelation 5? Verses 8 to 10 for us. Please listen here, Offenbarung 5, die Verse 8 bis 10. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of olives, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Okay. So David, uh, about whom is it speaking here? So, über wem spricht das hier? According to verse 8. To Mace verse 8. Yes. And the? Yes. Okay, so it speaks about the 24 elders and the four beasts. So, sprecht über 24 Ältesten und die vier Tiere. And what are they, according was, to verse 10? Was sind sie, gemäß Vers 10? Kings and priests. Yes, kings and priests. Könige right. und Priester. Okay. So, kings <coughs> plus priests. Könige und Priester. Alright. So, everybody can see this, right? Can you see Okay. So, whatever takes place in the heavenly sanctuary must also have its counterpart in the earthly sanctuary. Und was auch immer im himmlischen Heiligtum stattfindet, muss sein Gegenspiel oder sein Gegenteil im, auf dem irdischen Heiligtum haben. Okay, so let us go to First Chronicles. Zur erste Chronik gehen wir jetzt. 24. Kapitel 24. Okay, and that speaks about the earthly priests. Und hier okay. spricht es über die irdische Priester. Because this was, this are the heavenly priests. Da okay. Hier spricht es über die himmlische Priester. Hier in 1. Chronik die irdischen Priester. At the time of David. Zur Zeit Davids. Okay, let's read this. 
Lass uns das lesen. So, let's read verses 1, verses, uh, down to verse 3. Also zuerst die Verse 1 bis 3. And uh, Philip, you want to read this first, please? Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron, the sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Shaman. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore Eleazar and Shaman executed the priest's daughters. And David distributed them, both Sadok of the sons of Eleazar and Achimelech of the sons of Ithamar according to their offices and their service. Okay, so it speaks now about Aaron's sons and Aaron's sons were the priests. Right. Er spricht über die Söhne von Aaron und die Söhne Aarons waren die Priester. Okay, now let's read verse 4. Uh, so, jetzt Aaron, you wanna Vers 4. Read verse 4 and 5 for us, please. Die Verse 4 und 5. And there were. Mm -hmm. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Eliezer than of the sons of Ithamar. And thus were they divided among the sons of Eliezer. There were 16 chief men of the house of their fathers and eight among the sons of Itma, uh, Ithama, according to the house of their father. And thus they did divide by lot one sort which with another uh, for the governor of the sanctuary and the governor of the house of God were of the sons of Eliezer the sons of Itma. Yes. If I'm not, if I'm not. Okay, so how many do we have in total? So, wie viel gibt es insgesamt? 24. 24. 24. Right? 16 plus 8 is 24. 16 plus 8 is 24. Just confirm this. Let's read down to, uh, let's read verse 18 and 19. Das zu bestätigen, die Verse 18 und 19 lesen wir. Let's read down here. These were the orders of them, their servants to come to the house of the Lord, according to their manner, under Aaron their father, as the Lord God of Israel commanded them. Okay, so here we see the 24 lots, okay? And so you had 24 priests, and wh whom else did you have? So here können wir die 24, did you say lots? 24 priests. Oh, so here können wir die 24 Priestern sehen. And where else was there? Und wer war noch da? I mean, when, when, you, when you have 24 priests, who's still missing? Also, wenn man die 24 yes, priest. Priestern hat, okay. wer fehlt noch? Also der hohe Priester. So, these 24 elders, right, <laughs> they were priests. Also diese 24 Ältesten waren Priester. Yeah. And here we have 24 priests plus a high priest. Und hier haben wir 24 Priester plus der hohe Priester. And here in heaven you have 24 elders plus the lamb which is the high priest. Und right? im Himmel hast du 24 Ältesten plus der Lamm, so der, how many, der hohe Priester ist. How many you have then in total? So wie viel gibt es insgesamt? 25. 25. Okay. And do we have also a counterfeit 25? Gibt es eine, um, eine Verfälschung 25? Yes. The high priest and the 25 that are bowed, 24 that are bowed down to the sun. Exactly. Okay. Und der hohe Priester und die 24, die zur Sonne niederbeugen. Okay, so you have this 25 in total. Okay. Also diese 25 insgesamt. So therefore, these 24 elders in heaven are foreshadowed by these 24 priests on the earth. So diese 24 Ältesten im Himmel sind vorausgeschattet durch diese 24 Priester am Ende. Am okay. Erde. And now I want to make a suggestion who these four beasts are typified or foreshadowed by. Okay. Und jetzt möchte ich einen Vorschlag machen, wer diese vier Tiere ähm, vor, vorausgeschattet von Durch wen diese, durch vier, wen Tiere diese vier Tiere vorausgeschattet sind. Yes. Okay, let's go to Exodus 28. Also, zweite Buch Mose 28. And let's read verse 1. Vers 1. Okay, Exodus 28, verse 1. Uh, Susi, you want to read this first, please? And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother, and his 
sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eliezer, and Itmaha, Aaron's sons. Okay. So, who, whom do we have here? So, where are we here? Four sons. Yes, you have Aaron, the high priest, and you have the four sons. Also right? Aaron, the high priest, and his four sons. So, again, I would say, okay, so you have Christ as the high priest. Also, you have Christus here, the high priest. Okay. And he's the 25th in this illustration. And he's the 25th in this illustration. And he's Aaron here in this illustration with his four sons. And he's Aaron in this illustration with his four sons. Okay. And because the four sons, they were priests, right? The four sons, they were also priests. Okay. And the four beasts are also priests. And the four tiers are also priests. So that's at least my my thoughts to it. My thoughts. Let's, let's go. Let's continue. Let's go further. Now we want to look at the the garment. Okay. Let's find the these gewänder. Anschauen. Let's go down to verse two and three. Zweite Buch Mose 28 Verse 2 und 3. Daniel, you want to read this first, please? Exodus 28. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy birth for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Okay, so now it speaks about making these holy garments. And can you also read now verse 4? So spricht über diese heilige Gewände, die gemacht werden sollen. Und jetzt Vers 4. And these are the garments which they shall make a breast. And an effort, and a robe, and an ordered coat, and mitre, mitre, and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Okay, thanks. So, what what are the things that they should make for Aaron? What should they do for Aaron? Just name them, please. Breastplate. Yes, breastplate. Breast. Plate, effort, effort, yes. A robe, okay. A bridled coat. How do you spell this? B R O I D E R E D. D E R E D. D E R E D. Derret. Coat. A mitre. And a girdle. All right. So, and this is the garments for Aaron, right? Das sind die Gewände für Aaron. So Aaron was the high priest. Und Aaron war der hohe Priester. So I write here high priest. So hier schreibe ich hohe Priester. Okay. Now let's continue. Lass uns weiter. Let's jump down to verse nine to twelve. Jetzt die Verse neun bis zwölf. And thou shalt take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one sack stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other stone according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shalt thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches. ouches of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod, four stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. Okay, so what is described here now? So what is that here beschrieben? Plate. Verse nine says two onyx stones, right? So verse nine says two onyx stones. Okay. So basically, what you have is 
One stone and the second stone, right? Man hat hier ein Stein und ein anderer Stein. Okay. And what were to be put on these two stones? Und was soll auf diese zwei Steine geschrieben? Six names on one and six names on the other of the children of Israel. Yes. Also okay. die sechs Namen auf die eine und die sechs Namen auf die der andere von den Kindern Israels. So six names here and six names here according to what? The birth. Their birth. Okay. Also sechs Namen hier und sechs Namen dort gemäß ihrer Geburt. So the first born down to the sixth one and then the last six on this side. Okay. Der erstgeborene bis zum sechstgeborene und dann die anderen auf der anderen Seite. And it says in verse 12. Vers 12 sagt es. Yeah. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. So when now Aaron went before the Lord, yeah, he brought the names of um, yeah, God's people on his shoulders. He's bearing you up. So as Aaron yes. for God came, der hat die Namen von Gottes Kindern auf seine Schultern getragen. Er okay. hat dich hochgehalten. Yeah. Yes. Let's go to Isaiah 9 verse 6. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Because the high priest is Christ, right? Denn der Hohepriester ist Christus. So let's read Isaiah 9 verse 6. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Mm. Well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> For unto us a child is born, unto us his son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yes. So what is on Christ's shoulder? So what is on Christ's shoulder? The government. The government, right? The regierung. So, but the high priest had these twelve names on his shoulder. But the high priest had these twelve names on his shoulder. So basically, yeah, therefore we can see this represents now as an illustration for the government. So we can see that this is a representation for the government. Is. Okay, and I don't know the full implication of it, but. Well, in the building of Jerusalem, you had the twelve tribes, but you also had the twelve apostles. Yes. Also, in the building of Jerusalem, there were the twelve stems, but there were also the twelve young men. Twenty-four. So, I'm assuming that it's got something to do with the twenty-four elders. This number here. Yes. Ich gehe davon aus, dass es was mit diesen 24 Ältesten zu tun hat. That's a nice thought. Okay, so, so this basically represents government, okay? Also das stellt Regierung da. Because, PR. Right. Because it was on the shoulders. Weil es war auf seinen Schultern. And it represents... Okay, now let's continue. Let's go to verse 15. And jetzt Vers 15. And let's read down to verse 21. Bis Vers 21. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. After the work, the ephod, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twined linen, thou shalt make it. Four square it shall be, being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set it in settings of stone, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardis, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall set in, they shall set in gold in their enclosings. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel twelve, according to their names. Like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. Yes, so what is here to be made? Was soll hier gemacht werden? Yes. Okay. So this breastplate. So this breast. And how was it called? This breastplate. How was it called? Judgment. 
Yes, it was breastplate of judgment. Also, der Gericht, des Gerichts. Okay. It was put on the effort, right? Es war auf den effort. Breastplate of judgment. Was heißt, es war auf den effort? It says it here, uh, verse 15. Vers 15. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work after the work of the effort, thou shalt make it of gold and so on and so forth. So the effort was like this part here of the, the priestly garment where this breastplate was put on. Okay. okay. Are you sure? I thought the effort was what he carried on his shoulders, and the breastplate was made after the same manner as the effort. Uh, I have a picture here. I can post it in the live stream group also. Also, I have a build here, and I can das in the live stream post. I think this was the effort here, this, this bit here, this thing. And the breastplate was here. Dieses Ding war der Effort und das Teil in der Mitte war der Breastplate. Okay, I will just post it in the live stream. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here you have now a picture. So jetzt haben wir ein Bild. Okay, so the Breastplate, okay, this is what you can see in the middle. Also der Brustplatte, das kann man in der Mitte sehen. And the effort, I think it's this, you know, this says over the effort was the breastplate. Yes, this is this, this part which, which goes up here, like here. This the effort was like a shoulder pieces, but it was also this thing that went around you. It was all one yes. thing, and it, this just sort of sat on top of it. Yes, it's, it's this, this thing that is here with this. So we then have a vest. Like a vest, yes. Also, the effort is like a vest, and the breastplate sits there. Yes. Okay. So, and we see, yeah, there were the twelve uh, stones on this breastplate. And we can see the twelve stones on this breastplate. And what was on each stone? Was for of jeder Stein a name? Yes, was it? A name of a tribe, right? So and it's the, called the breastplate of the judgment. So the Lord or the high priest was to bear the names of his of God's people on his his bosom or the breast, as we. Das heißt das Brustplatte des Gerichts. This morning, right? Und der hohe Priest, der soll den Namen von Gottes Volk auf sein Brust tragen. Because what we can read now in this. Um, 29 to 30. I think it's my turn, huh? It says, And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for memorial before the Lord continually. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and Thummim. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. So, what does it teach us about Christ? So, was lehrt das über Christus? Yes, right? He has our names continually upon his heart. When he is now interceding before the Father for us. Yeah, and unsere Namen beständig in sein Herz, als er für bitte vor dem Vater unser Willen tut. Okay, and it says here, when was he to do it? Und wann soll er das tun? When he goes before the Lord. Lord. Okay. Vor dem Herrn kommt. So, and it's the breastplate of judgment. Es ist die Brustplatte des Gerichts. So. The high priest, when was he to appear before the Lord? Also der hohe Priester, wann soll er vor dem Herrn kommen? Die Atonement. Day of Atonement. Am Versöhnungstag. Okay. And that, that's why it was called the breastplate of judgment, because on the Day of Atonement is yes. judgment. Darum okay. hieß es der Brustplatte des Gerichts, denn am Versöhnungstag 
Weise ein Gericht. And when we consider our line uh, at the midnight cry, uh, it's the investigative judgment of the living, right? Auf unsere Linie am Mitternachtsruf, es ist der Beginn der Untersuchungsgericht an den Lebendigen. Yeah, and there the Lord will bear our names now on his heart before the Lord. Und da okay? wird der Herr unseren Namen auf sein Herz vor dem Herrn tragen. Obviously, if we are faithful. Okay. Wenn wir treu sind. So, uh, just a thought came to my mind. Ich habe gerade einen Gedanke gehabt. Because when does the Lord, when when does He bear the the names before God for you? Wann trägt der Herr die Namen unsere Willen vor Gott? Um, let's go maybe to the Bible to. Matthew 10, I think. This is Matthäus 10, I'll try. Yes, and then verse 32 and 33. Verse 32 and 33. Whoever will therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Okay, so the Lord will only confess you when you confess him. So the Herr wird dich nur bekennen, wenn du ihm bekennst. So, and how does it, how does he do it? In a sense, where is your name written? Und wie tut er das? Wo ist dein Name geschrieben? In the Bible. Yes, in the Bible. In the book. Yes. It is. In, it, it's in, written in the book of life, right? In the book of life. Which is basically the Bible. Right? It's in Grunde die Bibel. Yes. Okay. So your name is written in the book of life, and so I'm pretty certain this has a connection with the book of life. Okay. Dein Name ist im Buch des Lebens geschrieben und ich bin relativ sicher, dass das eine Verbindung mit dem Buch des Lebens hat. Hier ist the names written of every believer. So right? Hier sind die Namen niedergeschrieben von jeder Gläubigen. So it's in a sense it's the book of life you know, that he has on his, his breast. Okay. Und es ist das Buch des Lebens, die er auf seinen Brust trägt. And no. do you understand the connection? Okay. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that when you go to Revelation 21, it's very it also, you know, is because it says that this thing had to be four square. Yes. Offenbarung yes. 21 is said that this Brustplatte must be a four egg sign. Not, 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 not Revelation 21 says it. Exodus 28 says it. But I'm saying what's interesting is in. No, no, no. no. I'm talking about yes. there. It yeah. says that thing there is said it's going to be four squares. I, I, I know. Yeah, but what's it? Is that no way? No, no. Okay, sorry. So, also, Zweite Mose 28 sagt dass das hier quadratisch sein sollte und in Offenbarung 21 spricht das auch darüber, dass yeah, die Stadt und quadratisch ist. Ja. And okay. 12 precious stones on, on every entrance way also. Yes. But what, what the thing that interests me, it says in verse 22, it says, I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple in it. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting when you look at Solomon's temple the way it's laid out. You know, I've seen this picture and it looks like Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And so it says that the law, the two stones, the speaker of the two stones, is written on your heart, mm -hmm. right? So if that was the case, the most holy place would represent your heart, and the the temple. Th this is an illustration of the, the temple. temple. Christ, you know, so the illustration, Christ is the temple and this is Jerusalem. Yes, and then it says in Revelation 3, right? And we go to Revelation 3. Offenbarung <laughs> 3. In Philadelphia is, in one application, also the one 144,000, right? It's this church 
gespannt wird. Und in der einen Anwendung Philadelphia ist nur 144.000, das ist die siegreiche Gemeinde. In Vers 12 says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so if this is the temple, your name is written. Yes. And, and these are the pillars in a sense, right? The temple is, then the name is there in the scripture, and these are the Pfosten here. Soilen. Yes. Okay. So, yes. That's some nice connections. Okay. Everybody can follow so far? Can you just write for you? Okay. And if you want to in the door, please. Okay. So, let's go now back to Exodus 28. So we can see that this is now the breastplate of judgment was, uh, and it says was that um, worn on the, just on the breast, on the heart, right? Here on the breast getragen. Das Herz. So it's like John yes, leaning, leaning on the breast. breast. Yes, exactly. Johannes, der auf dem Brust Christi gelegt. So this was on the shoulders and this was on the breast. Okay. Das war auf dem Schultern getragen und das hier auf dem Brust getragen. Okay. Now let's go back to Exodus 28. Yeah. Lass uns zurück zu zweite Buch Mose 28. And um, let's go down to verse 33. Lass uns Vers 33 lesen. And let's read this down to verse 38. 33 bis 38. 38. And beneath upon the hem of it thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and belts of gold between them round about a golden belt and a pomegranate, a golden belt and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the rope round about. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord, and when he cometh out that he die not. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grain upon it, like the engravings of a saint, holiness to the Lord. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the dignity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow. And all their holy gifts, and it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. Okay. Or garment. Rather. So the first verses they speak about this this garment. Also, the first verses sprechen über diese Gewand. And what does it say? What what did it have? Und was sagt es? Was hat es? In verse 33, 34. In verse 33, 34. What was on the bottom of it? Was war unten? Yeah, bell and pomegranate, right? Bell plus pomegranate. Is it correctly spelled? I don't know. Okay. But and it was a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. Well, it's far from so far. Glocke, a kugel, a glocke, a kugel. And it says here in verse 35. Vers 35. Yeah, it says, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord, and when he cometh out, that he die not. So it was to make a sound. So that das war mm -hmm. dafür da, um ein Geräusch zu machen. Okay. Because you are to hear the approaching footsteps of an angry God. Du sollst den nahtretenden Fußstapfen eines zorniges Gottes hören. Alright. Now let's, uh, in verse 36, what is then described in verse 36 to 39? Die Verse 36. Uh, 38, sorry. Die Verse 36 bis 38, was wird hier beschrieben? <coughs> This Mitre, right? Also diese Mitre. And what does it say about it? Was sagt es darüber? What ha had it engraved? In? Was war darauf geschrieben? Eingeschrieben? 
Holiness to God. Holiness to, to the Lord. Heilige, Heil, Heiligkeit zum Herrn. Holiness. Heilig dem Herrn. To the Lord. Okay. And um, it was to place in verse 38 upon Aaron's forehead to do what? Und es soll auf Aaron sein Stirn sein, um was zu tun? We bear the iniquity of the holy things. Yes. Okay. So, bear iniquity of holy things. Dass er die Übertretung von heiligen Dingen tra tragen kann. Okay. So, and now let's go down to verse 39. Jetzt Vers 39. Yeah, so this is basically an illustration of this, this seal, right? An illustration of what? The seal. Also das ist eine Darstellung von den Siegeln. Yeah. And how do we know this? Woher wissen wir das? It's on the forehead. Yes, it's on the forehead. It's on the forehead. It's holiness unto the Lord, right? Heilig dem Herrn. But uh, where else do we see this? Mitra mentioned. And where see we this Mitra noch erwähnt? Yes, in Zechariah chapter three. Right? Zechariah chapter three. So there was this change of raiment, and then the Mitra was placed upon his head. Also, this wechsel an Gewänder and then this Krone, this Mitra on his head, on his head placed. Okay. Now let's go uh, to verse thirty-nine. Jetzt Vers 39. Mm, Philip, you want to read this for us? Okay, so this this garment or this coat was made out of what? Also, this Gewand, this Überzug, that was out of what? Fine. Yes. Okay, so this was. Fine as line. What is it? Coat. The coat. Broidered coat. So this is was fine linen and the mitre was fine linen. Okay. Das war feines Leintuch. Linen. Okay. So this and this. Okay. Okay. And now let's go and read verse forty to forty-three. And yes, the verse forty to forty-three. Because this speaks now about the garments for the common priests. Und jetzt spricht es über die Gewänder für die allgemeinen Priester. Okay, uh, Peter, you want to read this first, please? And for Aaron's son, you shall make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles and bonnets, shall thou make for them for the glory of and for the beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron, thy brother, and his son, and with him, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them. Sanctify them that they may minister to me in the priest's office, and thou shalt make them <coughs> find uh, them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins even to the thighs. They shall reach, and they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation. For when they come near unto the altar to minister into the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die, it shall be a statue forever unto them, and his seed after him. Okay, so what garments were there for Aaron's sons and Aaron himself? So, was waren die Gewänder für Aaron und Aaron's Söhne? Linen. Yes, okay. So also linen garments, and what else was there? And what else? Breeches. Breeches, yes. Trousers. Trousers. Hosen. Sure. Girdles. Bonnets. Yes. Okay. Girdles and bonnets. Also Hosen und Gürteln und Gürteln und Hüte. Like this? Gürteln. Bonnets. Hüte. That's it? 
Okay. And this is what they, it says in verse 30, uh, 43, And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister into the holy place. So, and when you look one more time at this picture here, then you can see, also, wenn du ein weiteres Mal dieses Bild anschaust, dann kann man sehen, you can see the, the, this common priestly dress. Diese okay. allgemeine Priestergewand. That's the guy with the white linen. Derjenige mit dem weißen Leib. Okay. So now we come to the day of atonement. So jetzt kommen wir zum Versöhnungstag. Because this is now where I got a little bit confused when I read this quote. Okay. So hier würde ich etwas verwirrt, als ich diesen Zitat gelesen habe mal. But uh, let's look at this now. Aber lasst uns das jetzt anschauen. It says, as the high priest laid aside his pontifical dress and offic officiated in the white linen dress of a common priest, so Christ emptied himself and took the form of a servant and offered sacrifice, himself a priest, himself a victim. So what does she say here? What did the high priest do with his pontifical garment? So was, der, was tat der hohe Priester hier mit seinen Gewändern? Yes, he laid. So this was this pontifical dress, right? Also das hier, I don't know what pontifical means. Also, also das war der hohe priestliche Gewand. Okay, because it was only for the high priest. Then das war nur für den hohen Priester. With this breastplate of judgment and these onyx stones and all these things. Okay. Mit der Brustplatte des Gerichts und diesen Steinen und alles. And he laid this aside, and then he officiated in this common priestly dress. Und er hat diese Gewand beiseite gelegt, und dann hat er gedient in diesen allgemein priestlichen Gewändern. Okay. What we saw is just this white linen dress. And then it says in the next wall phase. Next effect bedrückte. As the high priest after coming, uh, sorry, as the high priest after performing his service in the holy of holies, came forth to the waiting congregation in his pontifical robes, so Christ will come the second time clothed in glorious garments of the whitest white. So, what does she say? The high priest, he comes now after he cleansed the temple on the Day of Atonement in what garments? Also, was sagt sie, wenn der hohe Priester, nachdem er den Heiligtum am Versöhnungstag gereinigt hat, welche Gewänder erscheint er? Just for the linen. No, it says here in the pontifical robes. Also, it says here in the hohen priestliche Gewänder. So in this gar garment, right? Diese Gewänder. And then she says, so Christ will come the second time clothed in glorious garments of the whitest white. It, yes, but it's like he takes off this, he takes off the airport and all that, and underneath he's just got this white. Yes, yes. Underneath. Yes, that's, that's correct. Yes. Okay. But I always, you know, struggle with this quote because she says here in the first sentence, right? Also ersten Satz sagt sie, as the high priest laid aside his pontifical dress. So wie der hohe Priester sein hohe priestliche Gewände beiseite legte. Which is this here, right? With the breastplate and ephod and all these things. Der Brustplatte, der ephod und alles. Officiated in the white linen dress of a common priest. Und dann diente in der allgemeine weiße Gewände der allgemeine Priester. That's what he's got on underneath. Yes, that's what he got on underneath. Das hat er darunter an. And then it says in the next word phrase, as the high priest after performing his service in the holy of holies came forth to the waiting congregation in his pontifical robes. Also, und dann im nächsten Satz sagt, nachdem der hohe Priester gedient hat, und er kommt vor der Versammlung in seine hohe priestliche Gewände. Okay, but the difference is the pontifical robe is the white thing that he's got on, but the pontifical dress is the thing that he goes, goes over the top of it. Ah, okay. Nothing you're, you're positive. That he takes this off, but he's still dressed in this white robe. Yes, that's exactly what I, I was understand. Yes. But I was struggle with this quote here because mm -hmm. but that might be the the because it, it says the pontifical dress and efficient in the white linen dress right so yes yes okay no, i totally agree with that because i was thought it was somehow strange how she formulated it but it might be the the dress and the rope might be the the, the key. 
Okay, but let's look at this. Okay. Also lass uns das anschauen. Let's go now to Leviticus 16. Lass uns jetzt zum dritten Buch Mose 16 gehen. And let's read verses 1 to 4. Und lass uns die Verse 1 bis 4 lesen. Speaks about the day of atonement. Da spricht über der große Versöhnungstag. And I think uh, it's your Leviticus 16. One to four, please. Dritte Buch Mose 16, 1 bis 4. The Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not all at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark. If he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with the young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with the linen, linen girdle, and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These holy garments therefore shall he wash his, shall he wash his flesh. In water and so put them on. Okay, so what is Aaron to put on here? So what soll Aaron here and see? According to verse four. Gemäß Vers vier. Das Okay. Allgemeine Priester gewesen. So put this holy linen coat with his breeches, right? Also der linen Gewand und diese Hosen. But also this year, right? Aber auch das. Because the linen mitre, for instance, is part of this dress. Then das uh, linen uh, krone is ein Teil von dieser Gewand. And these are these holy garments, okay? Das sind diese heilige Gewände. Because uh, he's now to go before the Lord into the most holy place. Denn er muss vor dem Herrn im Allerheiligsten treten. And what is, the, is he to bear before God? Und was soll er vor dem Herrn tragen? The, these two stones in this breastplate of judgment. Right? Also diese zwei Steine und diese Brustplatte des Gerichts. So, when you now jump down to verse 21, wenn wir jetzt zu Vers 21 runterkommen, to, and let's read down to verse 24. 21 bis 24. So sieht's. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the hand head of the life deep goat and life goat. Life goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins between them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of the good man into the wilderness. Okay, stop here. So the, where, where, where is it? In a sense, in the terms of the service in the Day of Atonement. When are the sins put on the scapegoat? When are the sins put on the scapegoat? At the beginning or at the end? Am Anfang oder am Ende? Yes, at the end, right? Am Ende. So it's now when, when he finished cleansing the sanctuary. Also, er ist uh, fertig, indem dass er den Heiligtum gereinigt okay, hat. Okay, you want to continue, please? Weiterlesen, Vers 22. And the Lord shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land in, not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness, and Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall put up the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his feet with water. Yes his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. Yes, okay, so in verse 23, what is he to put off? Also in verse 23, what soll er ablegen? 
the linen garments, it says. Right? Also der Leingewand. And then in verse 24 it says, And she, he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place, and put on his garments. Vers 24. And come forth and offer his burnt offering. So, for me this was also a little bit confusing, because his garments is actually his own garments, right? Also für mich war das ein bisschen verwirrend, denn seine Gewände war seine eigenen Gewände. Yeah, because his garments is... Actually, this was Aaron's gun. Das hier war Aaron's, seine Gewände. So, but, uh, but that would mean that if this was true, then this would have mean that meant that he was, that he had done the, the Day of Atonement in the common priest dress and then at the end he had only this pontifical dress on. Aber wenn das der Fall wäre, dann hieße das, dass er den Versöhnungs, äh, der hohe priestliche Dienst am Versöhnungstag in den allgemeinen Priestern, Gewändern ähm, hätte getan und danach den hohe priesterliche Gewänder angezogen. Aber das kann nicht sein, denn er muss Gottes Volk in Gericht vor dem Herrn tragen. So, it's very clear that he wore these, these robes here. Also es ist sehr klar, dass er diese Gewände hier anhatte. And then he came forth with these white priestly garments. Okay. Danach ist er rausgekommen mit diese allgemeine priesterliche Gewände. I just want to confirm this with some Ellen White quotes. Ich möchte das nur bestätigen mit einigen Ellen White Zitaten. Okay, let's let's go down to early writings, early writings 55. Wir gehen zu Frühschriften 55. At the bottom of page 4. And this is the vision of the end of the 2300 days. Das ist der Vision vom Ende der 2300 Tage. Okay. Es gibt da eine Frage. Also diese Gewänder anziehen wäre das der Verbindung zwischen Menschlichkeit und Göttlichkeit. Yes, I would say so in the sense. It always illustrates this this point. Also, dem Sinne würde ich sagen, dass es diesen Punkt immer darstellt. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know specifically. Well, it fits on, on the kingly garments. Yes, in in the literal when he comes back, yes, but but in this illustration, it puts in these garments. So also in I don't know. Also, in this illustration, he puts these garments on. Well, Revelation. Offenbarung 19. Okay. Revelation 19. The vision. Okay, no, no, no. It says, yes, he says this, that he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. And it says, uh, he had yeah. a vesture yeah. on his thigh, the mm -hmm. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It doesn't say there, but it says. I mean, in verse 14, it says only the armies followed him when fine linen was clean. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, I guess that's. But in this quote earlier, at the beginning, we read. Maybe we go back there. Also, in this Zitat am Anfang, die wir gelesen haben. Under the heading Day of Atonement. Unter der Überschrift Versöhnungstag. On the bottom of page 3. Unten auf Seite 3. It says in the the middle part where the bold face is. In the middle, where the fat gedruckt is. It says, as the high priest, after performing his service in the holy of holies, came forth to the waiting congregation in his pontifical robes, so Christ will come the second time clothed in glorious garments of whitest white. So, in this sense, uh, he comes with these white garments. Also, in this sense, he comes with these white garments. So. There you can see that he comes with these white linen garments. Okay, so now let's go to the bottom of page 4, to the early writings 55.1. So, ganz unten auf Seite 4, Frühschriften 55.1. It's all just a point. Zechariah, <coughs> Josh was the high priest. Mm -hmm. And Joshua at the end gets given a garment also to Joshua put on. Am Ende in Zechariah bekommt eine Gewand, die er anziehen soll. So I'm wondering, right, because it says, it says in 
the verses that we read, that he takes off those robes and he washes himself, and then he puts the linen robe Come on. on. So I wonder if it's a different one that he's putting on. Yes. Und es sagt, dass er nimmt diese Gewänder ab und dann wascht er sein Fleisch mit Wasser und zieht dann diese Gewänder an. Und ich frage mich, ob das andere Gewänder yes, sind. Es sagt das, right? Es sagt, dass er seine Gewänder in der Heiligen Stadt verlassen hat und dann die andere Gewänder in der Heiligen Stadt verlassen hat. Das wäre Joshua, der diese Gewänder in der Heiligen Stadt verlassen hat, weil Joseph, als er aus der Prison kam, sagt, er hat sich selbst und sich selbst verlassen. Put on the garments, right? Yes, exactly. also, wenn er seine hohe priestliche Dienst gemacht hat, er soll das ausziehen im Heiligtum und diese priesterliche Gewände anziehen. Und das ist verglichen mit ähm, Josef, als er aus Gefängnis rausgekommen ist. Er würde gewaschen und rasiert und ihm würde Gewände gegeben, die er anziehen soll. And that's when Joseph gets in the chariot. That's the triumphal entry. And that's Christ coming yes. back. Und das ist gleich als Josef in diese Streitwagen einzieht, das ist gleich der triumphale Einzug, was auch gleich ist, Christi kommt wieder zur Erde. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now let's read this quote here in early writings 55.1. So jetzt frühschreffen 55.1. And we just read the bold face. Und wir lesen nur das Feldgedruckte. It says, he stepped, that is Christ, stepped into the chariot and was born to the holiest where the father sat. There I beheld Jesus, a great high priest, standing before the Father. On the hem of his garment was a bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate. So here is now Christ in the most holy place. So here is Christus im Allerheiligsten. Uh, and what garment does he wear? Und welche Gewand hat der an? High priest. Yes, this one were with a bell and the pomegranate. Also der hohe right. priestliche Gewand, das mit ein äh, Glocke und eine Kügel ganz oben. So therefore he also has this breastplate of judgment on him and all these other things. So okay. Wenn er das anhat, dann hat er auch diese andere Sachen auch. And the next quote is even clearer. Nächste Zitat ist sogar klarer noch. Early writings 251.2. Frühschriften 251.2. Says, I was shown what did take place in heaven at the close of the prophetic periods in 1844. As Jesus ended his ministration in the holy place and closed the door of that apartment, a great darkness settled upon those who had heard and rejected the message of his coming, and they lost sight of him. Jesus then clothed himself <coughs> with precious garments. So when now Jesus entered into the most holy place, also as Jesus in all the He now clothed himself with precious garments. Because that's the day of atonement. Right? Around the bottom of his robe was a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. So again we have this illustration. And then it says a breastplate of curious work was suspended from his shoulders. That's now the breastplate of judgment. That he's um, as he moved his lip This glittered like diamonds magnifying letters which looked like names written or engraved upon the breastplate. Yeah, we read the names were engraved on these stones, right? Wir haben bereits gelesen, dass die Namen auf diese Steine eingraviert worden sind. Upon his head was something which had the appearance of a crown. So that was the, the mitre. Right? Diese Krone war der Mitre. So when fully attired, he was surrounded by angels And in a flaming chariot, he passed within the second veil. Okay, so here we can clearly see that when he now entered into the most holy place, he now put on himself this pontifical robe or this high priestly garment. So okay. we can see that when the Holy Spirit came in, he had these high priestly garments. Okay, and I can assure you this thing will be very important soon. Okay. Ich kann euch versichern, dass dieses Verständnis wird bald sehr wichtig sein. Because uh, we understand the investigative judgment will be attacked. Okay. Denn wir verstehen, dass der Untersuchungsgericht wird unter ähm, Angriff kommen. Mark and I, we already experienced it when we were in this group in Düsseldorf. Als Mark und ich in Düsseldorf waren bei dieser Gruppe, wir haben das bereits erfahren. In, uh, but here, this is already a nice thing. And I think this is, will be a nice key to show 
uh, that this is a judgment. Okay. Aber hier ist eine Schlüssel und das ist um, eine Schlüssel zu zeigen, dass das hier eine Gericht sein wird. Uh, because these opponents they say yeah, there's no such thing as an investigative judgment. Okay. Diese Gegner, die sagen, es gebe überhaupt nicht so eine Sache wie ein Untersuchungsgericht. Okay. Therefore, I think through the garments you will be able to prove this. Also already. durch okay. die priesterliche Gewände werden wir imstande sein, das zu beweisen. Uh, but as you can see, it's not, from the Bible, uh, it's not so easy. But when you have these um, white quotes, it's very clear. Okay. Wir können sehen, dass von der Bibel ist es nicht so klar herauszusehen, aber mit den Zitaten von Ellen White zusammen. I mean, it, it, it is easy from the Bible, but you must be able to show it clearly. Okay. Also, es ist zwar einfach von der Bibel, aber du musst imstande sein, es klar zu zeigen. The problem is people just don't believe the Bible. That's the problem. Also, das Problem liegt darin, dass die Menschen einfach Gottes Wort, also die Bibel, nicht glauben. Because it's because it's all in symbolic language. They just say it doesn't say that. Weil es alles symbolische Sprache ist, dann sagen sie, das sagt es nicht klar. Heraus. So Alan White just says it black and white, very plain. So Alan White sagt es denn schwarz und weiß. So you have to get rid of her in order to hold to their false thesis. So That's what also Alan White, White verwerfen, um ihrem Falschheiten hochzuhalten. But all these things, uh, we can be sure, all these things will have a, a deep meaning and significance to us. Okay. Aber all diese Dinge werden eine tiefe Bedeutung für uns haben. And we just have now this evening I just gave you a, a overview, okay, that you heard this about the priestly garments. Und heute Abend habe ich nur einen Überblick, dass wir das gehört haben über die priestliche Gewände. And we can be sure that when we really go into the sanctuary we will study these things individually step by step what these represent und wir können sicher sein dass wenn wir in das heiligtum hineingehen wir werden jeder von diese einzelnen teile herausstudieren genau was die bedeuten and it will unfold the plan of salvation und es wird die erlösungsplan entfalten and it will become very very meaningful to each one of us und es wird von großer bedeutung für jeder einzelne von uns werden okay so it's a it's a taxing study okay so es ist einem uh, ein schweres Studium. But it's a nice study. Okay. Aber es ist eine schöne Studie. And when you really understand that these things, you will be blessed tremendously. Und wenn du das wirklich verstehst, dann wirst du sehr gesegnet sein. Okay. So any questions left? Hat jemand Fragen? Otherwise we can uh, close with our prayer round. Ansonsten können wir mit unserer Gebetsrunde abschließen.